incredible thing. So Eli, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I know this was uh, yeah. this was also a short notice one, but I, I appreciate it. You yeah, you course. you were really confident. You said, "Hey, look, you know, you throw me on there, I can talk about a number of topics in in any any multitude of areas." And uh, you know, and I was like, "Man, I I just want to hear what you have to say, and I'd love to hear you kind of run with it for a little bit." So I'm well, not sure cool. exactly what you have prepared, but I'm very excited. Yeah. Well. Um... Yeah, so I, I think that uh, big shout out to, to you guys over at Blockchain Center for putting this together. This is this is exciting, and yeah, we just met a met a few days ago, and and kind of um, excited to to be invited on here to to chat about what we're doing uh, at Idea Block um, and uh, how it integrates with with the other stuff that you guys are talking about today. So, a- um, absolutely, um, you know, and before you get into everything, I want to give a huge shout out to the Raleigh community, which is underserved. I know. All the big shots in New York, Nick Spanos, you know, might be overlooking us down here, but no slouch is a lot of innovation down here. I know you're, you're down here as am I, and uh, I'm really excited at the prospect that the triangle has, you know, kind of influencing this space. And it seems like we have, uh, you told me some things actually about, uh, you know, local, local yeah. initiatives and, and everything else. I'm not going to get too much into it, but um, it was really exciting to hear that somebody's trying to champion, um, you know, values that I hold dear. And it, it seems like the more and more that I get deeper into blockchain, a lot of people have the same principles. I think we've washed out of, uh, you know, this 2017 ICO growth over growth, VC yeah. funded, all this stuff where we just try and get these tokens out. And we're, we're moving into tangible use cases and, and, and things that actually make a difference. Um, I thought your project was incredible the way that you talked about it because it was a conversation that had come up actually in one of our calls. We were building something. Yeah. Uh, our developers had come out with something. And um, actually, offensive patent protection was a discussion that we were having. And then yeah. cut to literally a couple of days later, <laughs> uh, you know, I was talking about poor man's patent and everything else. And, you know, you had something that, you know, maybe I touched on the idea or something, but you actually built out a full-fledged idea around mm-hmm. these principles. And... I, I thought it was incredible. And, and the fact that you have an API and everything else is like even better, you know, like that you've yeah. gotten the idea to that point. So, yeah, we've been, we've been going at this uh, for quite a while now. I mean, we're, we're a, a full fledged funded company and we started uh, uh, about two years ago um, coming up here. So we're, we're, uh, we're going strong. We're, we're scaling and it's a, uh, it's a really exciting future. We got ahead of us here. So we're really happy to, to be moving into 2021 for, for a host of reasons, right. Uh, as the rest of the world, but uh, to get out of 2020, but we're, we're also, you know, super excited about what the next year um, and onward brings for us. But, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll chat a little bit about my background. Maybe that's a good place to start and then move into to kind of what we're doing. Does that sound good? Yeah. So uh, I, I grew up, uh, I'm from the Midwest originally. Uh, my, my father was was a supercomputer engineer. He did a lot of stuff in in early tech in the eighties and nineties. Uh, so I guess uh, coding and, and technology it was kind of something that was was at our dinner table every night. So I, I picked it up kind of by osmosis a little bit. And so I started coding pretty young. You know, I was eight or nine years old writing writing basic uh, code at, at my dad's office. I still remember it. Um, I think I told you that the other day. To bring back memories, but. Um, you know, I always had that seed for technology and being able to, to kind of solve problems and use code to do so. Uh, after high school, went to I studied computer science uh, and electrical engineering at uh, MIT and then uh, University of Wisconsin, uh, Madison. After that, went on uh, to law school. I uh, had a pretty, pretty deep interest in, in the, the law and politics and humanities and stuff. So I wanted to, to get uh, some more knowledge in that. Um, and specifically, given my kind of tech background from my undergrad degree, you know, was was particularly interested in uh, in IP law and, and patent law. So I went in, and, um, uh, you know, ran the law journal there for for IP. So I got an even deeper knowledge of of that, and then went to work after school uh, down on K Street in Washington D.C. doing you know essentially like five G uh, patents for the large like telecommunications companies, and they they put me to work pretty hard there for a while. Um, learning the ropes and, and kind of really learning the business side of, of patents and, and intellectual property and the law. So I, I really cut my teeth um, in, in a real steep way there for their, uh, while I was down there and really got a good holistic kind of uh, overview of, of how IP really 
um, makes or breaks a company, especially, you know, in this, this new technology and innovation based world um, where, you know, you, you sink or swim based on, on what assets your company has. And, you know, we're, we're past the world of it. It's how much inventory do we have in, uh, in our warehouse or, you know, how much, you know, how, how much steel can we, can we lay this week? Right. We're now into the companies that are the largest market cap companies in the world are almost solely based on uh, technology and information. Right. So, you know, that has skyrocketed the importance of, of protecting those, those core asset, assets of these businesses, which is our vehicle and, and, and our reality is, is IP. And typically when people think about that, it's patents, trademarks, copyrights, and trade secrets. Okay. And for all four of those different traditional types of ways to protect an idea um, or, or product or innovation, you know, time is a big deal, right? So it's it, most cases where you have like a patent infringement suit, you talk about these billion dollar cases between Apple, Google, Samsung, Qualcomm. Um, it all comes down to who had these ideas first, you know, who filed these patent applications first. But um, one of the, the dirty little secrets is that if you, um, if you can prove you were first, whether you have a, had a patent or not, um, you can still, um, it's called, you can essentially nuke someone's um, intellectual property if you can prove that you were first, right? In the case of patents, you have to prove that you were first um, and that you made it public, publicly available. Uh, but uh, boiled down to its essence, if you were first, um, you, you're protected against um, uh, infringement suits against third parties who might gain intellectual property on that idea. So I remember uh, it must have been three or four years ago, and you know, I was I was into uh, Bitcoin early on. I loved the tech um, and you know, didn't buy a bunch of it, but I was just super interested in, in the way it ran. Um, and you know, fiddling around a little bit with some stuff and, and Bitcoin Core and some of the CLI stuff just for other side things just to play around. And it just uh, kind of dawned on me like the time aspect. You can look at you can look at Bitcoin um, as a or blockchain in general, I guess, in, in most cases, is, is a, a network of timestampers that can prove time really better than any other vehicle that's that's available um, up until now in history, right? So this this big va time validator that's sitting there um, at our disposal to use. And I looked around, I think, I think that I can use this, you know, we can use this to prove when someone had an idea without all of the overhead associated with, you know, going to get a lawyer, uh, fighting with the government to get a piece of intellectual property. And then right there, you're really just starting out because now you got to have to go um, enforce that against companies to, to maintain your market space and exclusivity. And then maybe they try to, to nuke your intellectual property, right? It's, it's this long protracted, extremely expensive process that can really cost um, many companies their, their coffers and they have to go to business. It's so expensive. It would be great if there was a kind of a low touch, um, you know, IP alternative, right, where you could really protect everything that is going on in your R&D department as a tech company. Or if you're just a startup, maybe you only have a core assets, a, a asset of five real ideas that you want to protect, but you don't have $10,000 per idea to go file a patent application, pay a lawyer to do so. Um, and, you know, there's just so many use cases where if we had a real kind of um, first touch pr defensive protection for what you're doing, where you can guarantee that no one is going to come along later who does have that money to go get that patent and stop you from entering your market once you develop that that product, right? Um, if that if we have an alternative to to patents, to trademarks, to, to copyrights that could allow you that access to your market forever, if you indeed were first, it all comes down to proving the time that you had that idea, right? And what I realized is we could use um, the time stamping capability of, of blockchains. And for us, we we're a little partial to, to proof of stake um, consensus or proof of proof of work consensus uh, to to prove that it's just the strongest way. It's it's the most solid foundation for doing so. Um, and so we use Bitcoin and then um, we use we use Litecoin as a kind of a um, to piggyback on that for, for extra validation in terms of timestamp, but um, our main one is Bitcoin. And so, you know, we've had tremendous success. We, I, I built a, uh, I built the first word alpha on my own while I was still working as an attorney. And, and luckily we, 
um, had some success and you know were able to, to get funded and I was able to step away from my legal practice and, and kind of haven't looked back and we've continued to to bring more people on and and get clients and now we're in, in Q1 um, 2021 we're, we're working hard right now to to finish off the uh, the first uh, non-beta version so we launched a beta last year which is available and um, it's kind of where we are as a company so we're we're, uh, we're moving on up yeah it sounds uh it sounds you know i think after you know talking to you and and in your kind of journey you know coming from this computer science background and, you know development background you know they, there's a difference between or i'm sorry between between rather uh coding and, and computer science theory and i i think that you know there's real brilliant uh, computer scientists that come up with great ideas, architects come to mind where, you know, they, they design something and, um, you know, that then, you know, sometimes it goes to a dev team to implement, um, right. or maybe it's the, the guy doing full things, but, um, you know, there, there's a special set of people that really kind of move into this IT or IP space. It was, it was something that was really interesting to me. My, my father was a lawyer. Uh, you know, I was a self-taught computer programmer you know, and I was talking about Buffalo earlier, but there wasn't a lot of people, you know, around me that were specifically, you know, very involved in, in, in the computer science field or, or like had anything, you know, if you found somebody who was an engineer and the, the engineer was a mechanical engineer, didn't really do a lot of programming, maybe work somewhere like Calspan or, yeah. or you know, one of these bigger IBM companies. IBM transplants up north. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of this modern tech infrastructure. It was very, you know, nuts and bolts, looking yeah. at design sheets, things like this. Uh, you know, maybe you got a guy that did cat, right? The only people in my life that were doing something was like a cousin I had, I maybe saw once in a while, but he didn't really help too much. So you had to learn, then, you know, then you go into like your traditional type of education field and, and you start building on that. And then you're presented with something new, which is this blockchain thing. And everything that you were basically contributed to you coming up with this idea of, hey, look, you know, I have this IP, blockchain is yeah. interesting. I understand, uh, you know, I understand, uh, you know, the, the technical capacities. I understand the architecture. Um, I, I found that very interesting. Um, yeah, it kind of, you know, it, it, it is cool that, that it, you know, the, the puzzle pieces were all there and, and that, you know, it kind of requires all of them to be there in your mind somewhat to have the understanding to see how it all fits together, right? Um, so, you know, I guess it's kind of, uh, blind luck that I ended up going into all those different kind of fields in my background and then they all kind of came together and uh, you know just happened to to go look into you know the, what was what this Bitcoin thing was running on and and stuff so yeah there's a lot of uh, they call that serendipity right uh, a lot of a lot of stuff I don't have a control over that, that came into it but I, you know I'm happy that I had that kind of that moment where I realized kind of how how it came together because it's it's been super fun to to build a company um, it beats sitting at a at a desk taking orders for twelve hours a day, right? Um, and, sure. and actually build something on and and do something that's really exciting and you know really making waves in an old you know you, you can look at like Bitcoin's uh, you know at its highest level is is a way to disrupt the monetary system um, and you know what what the kind of corollary for us is we look at is is using that tool to do the same thing to um, a likewise kind of old buttoned up industry of, of law, right? Um, we're at yep. least one of it where uh, things have been the same for a long time. Um, there are tools out there now available and, and people doing cool things and, and, and ways to, to really change that for the better. Right. And, um, and make it more fair, really. Um, it's, it's not, it's no longer who, who has the most lawyers or who has the most access to attorneys or, you know, who, who can persuade the government better. Right. It's, it's now, um, objective, objective truth uh, backed by um, you know, uh, the level of level of proof on the on the time step in that uh, is virtually um, you know diminishingly diminishing chance of of anything uh, being incorrect right so yeah I think I think another interesting aspect of what you do as well uh, is uh, the Litecoin implementation and um, Litecoin has a near and dear place to my heart and I think a lot of uh, you know, a lot of early crypto adopters uh, uh, heart because I remember that being like the first substantive for fork that was yeah, yeah. actually seeing any kind of level of metric success. Yeah. 
And I, I'm actually very impressed with the Litecoin Foundation. Um, mm -hmm. Being that they're overshadowed in a lot of ways by Bitcoin. I, and, you know, Charlie yeah. Lee and the guys that, you know, you know made, made that, that project really never intended for it to be bigger than Bitcoin, which is also right. like an act of humility, right? So yeah. um, I find it interesting. I think they have a great network. You know, I think they did things differently and I think they're pretty honest about what they're trying to be and, and what they're trying to accomplish. And, um, you know, I, I think for you to put that in Litecoin as well, I think is, yeah. is really awesome. First of all, it's a little bit faster, right? And, yeah, I mean, that's um, really, you keyed in on the one of the big reasons why I did that, right? I mean, if, if we're talking about time intervals, we've got a block time interval around, you know, 10-ish minutes for, for Bitcoin, but we wanted to have, be a little more granular than that for people who wanted, you know, our customers who wanted to get something up, up there and, and at least have one confirmation now, right? You want to have something, at least one hook. And in addition, it's it's really redundancy on it, you know? For any haters who say that, oh yeah, the, there's a mistake somehow that you get this hash into Bitcoin and... Yeah, you know, it's somehow wrong, right? Well, how's it wrong on another network that's that's running the same protocol, right? Uh, it's it's like that is is doubly um, uh, troubling for your for your argument there, right? So um, it's and it's also you know a lot um, less expensive to get something uh, on Litecoin um, in you know fiat uh, um, conversion, right? So it, it doesn't take much to to use it, right? In addition to what you're already kind of using in transaction fees to um, interact with, with Bitcoin, so yeah, it was just kind of a natural thing. It was like a it was like a kid brother, right? To to our big to our big brother, um, in terms of an another blockchain to use. Yeah, absolutely. So second question is, seeing as though you picked Litecoin, kind of gives you hints that you've probably been in the space a while and thinking about this idea for a while. So like, I guess like when when did this when when did you start? like actually implementing idea block like it, it wasn't it doesn't sound like it was a 2017 thing it might have been a little bit before i i might be off on that but maybe yeah, you were playing around was, with it previous yeah it was like probably late 2016 when i actually i remember i was making um making pancakes for my kids like on a saturday morning it was it was probably i think it was actually like pretty cold out for north carolina version of cold right uh and i remember just kind of sitting there flipping pancakes and it just kind of came to me like the whole time thing and i kind of said i remember sitting down and and like the kid like my boys were talking to me and like my wife's trying to talk to me and i'm kind of off in this like on this cloud thinking this can't be right this is the, what you know what's and i've spent the last you know whatever it is four years three and a half years um since i thought of it just like trying to prove that there's a there's a flaw in this this scenario and, and i just haven't been able to do it yet so but i remember that that moment, it, yeah, it is, it is kind of special to, that I can, I did really have kind of like that thought, like, oh, wow, we could do this. Oh, wow. Yeah, that could change things, right? Um, that moment was pretty cool. But, you know, uh, I was still working at a firm. I was working, you know, like 60 hour week, you know, 80 hour weeks with these people trying to get a family up and start and run. It's just like so much work in terms of like just the, the drudgery and the rat race a little bit. So, you know, having this to do on the side, I was up anyway, like feeding kids in the night. And so I might as well start running up the alpha and, you know, got that built and then had the proof of concept and started talking to people about whether this is something that, that was worth anything and, and uh, got positive feedback from, from my network and stuff like that. So really that kind of inspired me as a mood lighting gig to, you know, I was coding at night and um, might as well do it during the day too. And, and went looking for some money, got a little bit and, and off we went. So absolutely yeah. so um kind of rolling into i guess like another aspect of this which is um like i do want to dive a little bit into the technical piece but not not mm -hmm. so deep that it it kind of you know we get in the weeds about all the, right. the technical capacities at a baseline understanding of what's going on here say like i have this code i've tested it it works um we have uh, you know, some kind of push to a GitHub repo, right? And this is the code, right? Mm -hmm. That exists, the, this exact code. This is the version of it. Mm -hmm. Do you literally just take the entire code file, hash it down and then insert it into the blockchain as a as a hash that proves that that exact code can be rehashed? I can prove that in court. Like what, what is that? Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good description like? right there. I mean, you got it uh, on a high level. I mean, the, the idea is that we can represent any, any file, any information um, from a, a single character, all the way up to 
you know, the, the Library of Congress it can be, all be mm -hmm. um, boiled down to to um, uh, a known set of of uh, characters and alphanumeric uh, string and uh, called a hash, right? So um, the idea is that we can we can insert that, and I know a lot of other implementations have have used hashing for for similar purposes, and um, but you know the the ability to do so allows us to a do something much much quicker in terms of um, protecting intellectual property. Typically, you have to go call a lawyer, you have to get them on the phone, you have to you know uh, hire them. Then three months later, maybe you have a meeting, and then you know a year later, this idea you had a year ago is just now being filed for protection. Right? This is it's always been a long protracted process, and and like uh, we're using technology to make that year um, into seconds, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So here here's the other thing too. Um, and I could go into the capabilities because I really understand, uh, you know, on a technical level, exactly what you're trying to accomplish here. So, um, for those of you watching that, you know, I'm sure most of you understand hashing and how it works. Essentially, you know, you have a huge file and no matter, or a small file. And what he's saying there is it could be, you know, massive, uh, basically unlimited. Right. Um, and then all the way down to the smallest thing that you can do, but essentially if you, take this thing and you put it, you put it through, you know, uh, some kind of function that essentially, you know, not getting into cryptography too much, but this is essentially how blockchain works is, is you squash it down and it gives you this unique uh, string of characters. And it can only, the only way that you could ever redo that unique string of characters is by putting the exact same contact through the hashing function. And it comes out the other end. Right. So uh, Eli, uh, and, and uh, has streamlined a way to do this. And, and I'm assuming the APIs, like if I wanted to link it to GitHub, it, this is something that is very yeah, we, easily done. I, right? I built that integration already that, that runs in a terminal. It's on NPM right now, if anybody wants to try it out. Um, it's, we're in beta, like I said, and, and our, that integration, it's, it's called idea block commit, right? So we've I built that integration right into Git and I use it on our own code. So um, yeah, what it does is essentially you, you turn it on in a repo and um, when you commit, code it takes the short hash that git generates and concatenates that with the sha-256 hash of uh, and I, I know i'm getting techie here but uh no, it's okay. together and and um gives uh, puts that into to both blockchains so that you have this proof that's over and above you know um uh, git and and github or whatever you get lab or whatever uh, your favorite repository is um provides you right um, you still have to, you would have to subpoena Microsoft, right? If, if you needed a, a real timestamp to, to get somebody down to the courthouse to say, yeah, our, our server logs say this, and this guy's telling the truth. Well, with, with us, like, yeah, you could still do that or you could not, because we give you this thing where you're in custody of your own proof that, that you committed this code and the ideas in this code, um, were created at this time. So, yeah. And then, That's you know. Cool. An API, that's just one integration that we have for, for coders, right? But then um, the main kind of way that, that our users um, interact with us is is a web-based um, application. So um, yeah, yep. it's, it's really just a, a four-step. Um, there can be more steps if you want to add more stuff, but um, you simply, you know, give it a title, right? Give, give this idea a title, um, add any additional description that you want, but the, the bulk of of what you want to um, to put on um, in the idea itself to describe this this thing that you want to protect um, is is essentially uploaded through your own files that you've been taking notes on, for example, or maybe you take a selfie video of yourself explaining it, or maybe you have a prototype and you take a little video of it, or the napkin at dinner, you just snap a picture of it, and this all goes into right, the bundle of files that describe this idea. You just give it to us and we do the, we do the rest. That's phenomenal. I mean, the fact that it's, it's, you know, it's on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, yeah. It, it's, uh, I think it's going to play a major role, this type of thing, you know, moving forward as data, you know, already very significantly important. But, you know, the actual cool. elements of an idea and everything else do, do, you, uh, you know, they, they come up specifically. I think right now, as the banks wake up and everything else, and they have patent teams going in the offense and trying to patent as much stuff as possible right yep. uh, it's important that people are protecting themselves from even maybe not patenting it to keep other people out but just keep right. themselves in right, exactly right. which yeah. is it's a different it, kind of protection than a typical patent i mean it's it's defensive versus offensive i mean 
yeah, with a patent, you can kick everyone out, but for that extra little bit of kind of power in terms of IP, you have to spend, you know, five years in front of the patent office and then um, pay all the, the, the money to get that done. Right. It's, it's a time cost. It's a, it's a monetary and balance sheet cost for you. You know, if it's worth it for you to do that, if it's one of your key ideas as a company, yeah, of course, go do that. But one of the, one of the cool things about idea blocks that we play nice with all the existing systems. So, you know, you can have idea block as a first touch and then pick the ones that, you know, are going to go to market, for example, to go get further offensive protection. If you think you need it, just like you always have. Right. Yeah, and you don't even have to think about it if you have an API built in, right? It's, yep. it's just there, right? Um, and uh, I think that's important too, because when you talk about automation and human error, like if you forget to do something that costs you millions of dollars in the long run, um, yep. you know, whether, you know, to pursue something that you might have already built and now are unfairly in the position of, you know, trying to prove something and going through these legal fees, like they will drown you in it. I'm sure you have oh, experience yeah. in this, right? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's one of the key strategies of, of the big guy versus little guy um, is that, you know, they, they call it backing up the truck, right? Cause they, they fill a semi with, uh, with paper and dump it on the little guy and he's got to run through it and figure out what's in here. And, and before you know it, you don't have enough lawyers, you don't have enough money to, to even get through the semi and the case is over. Right. So it becomes a, you know, almost like, you know, old school war, who's got the biggest guns, right? It's who's got the most money. It's, the, it's not even a, uh, it really never even gets to court. It's just who's got the most resources to win. And and to me, you know, we can do better than that. You know, as a society, it can be <laughs> yeah. more objective. I think, I think, I think on a personal <laughs> note too, I'll chime in yeah. here. I've talked to a lot of different people in patents and, uh, you know, in the patent space and everything else and all these lawyers and attorneys and, and everybody in the world, right? And uh, at conferences and everything else, I think, I think it's a very practical approach you know, rather than spend a billion dollars and, and, you know, all this time, effort, energy going through all this complete bullshit that is in a lot of times useless, uh, you know, just running around dealing with lawyers, doing all this paperwork, not saying that it always is, but for a small thing that you just want to implement, right? right. Or maybe it's just to protect yourself going forward because you don't even know if you have a unique idea in there, yeah, right? Because I'm not a bad guy. Yep. I, I, I have no idea, you know, I, don't have any patents. I, you know, I never even looked at it. Maybe there was something I did along the way I could have protected myself on. Um, so it's just, you know, it's interesting, you know, uh, to, to think about it in that a aspect yeah. is, you know, it's there, it's on, it's, it it's lessens, there for you. It lessens the anxiety associated with innovation, right? Because you're right. It, and I call it like the crystal ball problem, right? Because you to have a, a really buttoned up successful IP strategy and implementation. It, there's this like, it's like the Marty McFly deal. You, you have to know what's going to happen in the future to make a decision now. Like you have to pick with limited resources, which ideas are we going to go after and protect with this expensive patent process, right? Well, if you pick A and B, the market picks B in terms of being the, the really the thing that's uh, most valuable and marketable three years later, you couldn't know before that you should have done B, right? <laughs> so with us, you get this base layer where you don't have to select that stuff, right? And it gives you this this base layer where yeah maybe maybe you do pick a right and b goes but b can go now without someone kicking b out and now you're really up a creek right if you've built yeah. a factory to make this to make b work and now you got to stop that's a problem yeah and i'm gonna put you on the spot here just a little bit i actually yeah. have a question about um and you know i don't know if you can talk about it if, you know if, uh, is there anybody using it right now um that you can talk about that like you're proud of or is there yeah. is there people that you maybe you can hint at that are using it currently with you um and people yeah, you're working there, with there are a couple companies that have you know some people are are beta testers that that are using it and, and just you know like you said don't don't necessarily want to be out at the moment but uh you know one company that comes to mind that really they they put us in their slide deck right in, in terms of um they're, they're working on a a big uh series b rays and and they you know one of the, the decks is how do you, you know, or one of the slides is is their ip strategy slide right and we're we're kind of at the top of the list there um it's a it's a company called called zeus electric chassis it's in uh, it's actually out of minnesota and they make um uh, trucks that are completely electric right to compete you know they don't look like they look a little bit like the cyber truck i guess but uh it's more uh you know competitor um not directly for you know, commercial sale, uh, commercial sales, uh, like you'd see at a, a dealership, but for 
for example, mid to heavy level use, like uh, an electric version of the, um, you know, the electric truck with the bucket, right, is a good example, right? This is sure. more like F-350, not F-150, right? That kind of market. Um, okay. and, and as you know, the that market is really hot right now, the, the whole electric car market, obviously, but also, you know, the the kind of tentacles and, and kind of breaking their way into any type of automotive. And they're, they're one of the companies leading the way into the, into the truck space. That's not you know, necessarily the, and so, so this is, around, right. But it, utility type um, applications. So, and they, they, yeah, put, and it, they put a ton of stuff on there. You know, they're, we, we got a lot of their stuff on there right now. So. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. I'm, I'm glad to see like, you know, when you talk about blockchain projects, really it comes down to like, Oh, is there anybody using it? And it's awesome to hear that there are people yeah. using it and that you guys are, are kind of moving yeah, we're uh, fortunate, towards we're fortunate in the, in the aspect that, you know, it really makes sense. I mean, a lot of stuff is, is and I, the previous speaker, I caught the tail end of it. He, he was saying, you know, my, he said his, uh, his business partner used to tell him, um, get out of the weeds, man. And just tell them what it is because they don't care what like the base layer of Bitcoin's doing. They just want to know why the hell should I buy your thing or what, you know, for us, it's the same way. It's like, yeah, it's, we run on top of a Bitcoin, but we don't need to be talking about like, yeah, UTXO selection with, with somebody who just wants his damn idea protected. Right. And it, for us, it's, it's an easy kind of, um, it, it's not easy, I'll say, but it's a, it's easier than a lot of other uh, sales pitches that have to come out of the blockchain space because we, we can re really make a difference in, in your, um, in your asset, asset class of your, of your company and what, and what you have. Right. And what protection you have for those those really uh, millions of dollars you're pouring into R&D, you're getting a ton more back. And it's it's really um, makes a lot of sense for people. And so we don't have to be, you know, listing all these esoteric reasons to have. It's just like this is going to impact your pocketbook. It's going to take anxiety off the table for you. And, um, you know, really, if it's cheaper, if it's, you know, frankly, better why wouldn't why would you do it right and yeah I, think, I mean it's a it's a very tangible insurance policy yeah and, exactly. and, and provable insurance policy against this stuff and i think also like you know you were saying easy i think you make it look easy because you're a patent attorney and an mit guy to, to build this like you have the experience and wherewithal to understand the technical aspects and legal aspects that go into it but also you make it easy for other people by taking your ideas and, and codifying them and, and placing them into you know a very usable application yeah. Um, that brings this insurance policy together, right? It so, was, yeah, and that was one of the kind of the, I guess the, the main tenets of what I wanted to kind of put in the, the culture of the product and the company is that, like, yeah, we're, it's complicated on the back end, but let's abstract that out for the user and just give them like a real user friendly, intuitive kind of interface for them to to interact with their ideas. Um, and really, the protection aspect is um, with this our our enterprise product that's coming out um, in, in a few months here, that's like really just the first step of the way they interact with the ideas they put on with us. After that, they can manage it. They can look at, you know, um, they can collaborate inside of our, our product and, and keep track of, of where projects are and really update things they've done yesterday, right? And and add little things as it goes along and you get a full clean track of the way that, that ideas are progressing. And the best part is as it's progressing in real time, it's being protected, right? So. It's it's a way to to get information on um, you know for for managers to see where everybody is to to rank performance and see who's who's uploading their their stuff right and and who's who's really working hard and, and adding to the um, the substance of the of the company's um, uh, base um, in an objective way that's provable like you just said so it's it's kind of you know protection the protection aspect's great but also the users really uh, really like the, that they can kind of manage the IP inside of, of the platform. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, and I think, um, you know, I asked for like 30 minutes. I think we ran a little bit over here, but oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 like, I was having a good time. Um, yeah. I think, uh, I think Eric should be, you know, we could start queuing him up, but, um, sure. what I, what I would like to, you know, some, some final things and, uh, you know, um, final thoughts on it. Definitely want to like try and, figure out a way to implement this and, you know, kind of what I'm doing, uh, you know, you, yeah. you have a really yeah. good value. It's on tomorrow, man. Whenever. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, I, 
I, I really do understand what you're, what you're talking about. Uh, you know, maybe not all the legal aspects, but definitely at least from a technical perspective, is, is that something is provable is a really important aspect. So um, there's that. Um, the other things I really wanted to touch on, you know, I think you guys are swinging more into like, a, you know, an outreach and awareness type thing. And um, this is something that, you know, I, I definitely want to help with. But you know, as far as like, what's a, what's a tangible step? Like, does somebody request your beta? Do they contact you? Like, what, what does it look like? Say somebody's interested in, in this value prop that you have, which I think mm -hmm. is significant. Like what, what, are, where are they going? What are they doing? Are they following you yeah. on so, Twitter? They're, they're yeah, you can, out you, can, you can email, you can reach out to me via email. We've got all our contact information on our socials. I, um, we are uh, idea block on, on all the socials. Um, you should be able to find us. And um, our, our website's ideablock.io. That information's on there as well. Um, and uh, the best way, to, if you want to get on the beta and, and give it a test drive, um, is to just go to our site, uh, ideablock.io. And yeah, there's a request beta invitation, you know, and, and fill that out. And we we turn around those, you know, we do a little vetting. You know, it's, it was a closed beta at, at the beginning we, uh, to, to make sure that we're we're getting the right stuff on there and we're getting serious users on there. But um, you know, it's, it's a real quick process to, to get you on and, and you can start using it. And, you know, really right now it's free. So go on and do some stuff and, and test it out. And most importantly for us, you know, we, we love feedback, right? We want to make it our product the, the best it can be for, uh, for, for our clients and customers. So, you know, if you see something that, that you'd like improved or, you know, feature suggestions and, and, uh, anything else that would make it better and you'd like, you know, we're, we're all ears. We love that kind of stuff. So, um, come on, check it out, protect yourself and, and give us some feedback and we'll, we'll move this thing forward and uh, make it great. Yeah. And, um, you know, on, uh, on, you know, from, from our perspective at the blockchain center, I will say this, you know, we, we have a lot of developers we train, um, you know, and I think uh, we try to bring value to everybody here. Right. And one of the things that I think is a, is a responsible thing to do is trying to talk about like, hey, look, you know, we're training in blockchain, we're doing all this, like, you know, the 40 devs that we have in, in any given quarter, or, you know, sometimes bigger, sometimes smaller, just depends. Um, but, you know, trying to explain to them the value of IP is something that I think moving yeah. forward, I definitely would like to have, you know, either this segment or something else, you sure. know, in front of them so they understand whether they're with us or somewhere moving forward, I think it's an important yeah. thing to bring up. And the second thing is I definitely want to, you know, incorporate you know, and see, see like what other aspects outside of IP, you know, like where this hashing API, you know, and, and, and everything that it encompasses it, you know, whether that's preventing deep fakes or whatever, you know, like proving that this is the video, they, there's other applications here that are very widespread in, in the hashing component. And, 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 you know, for those of you watching, you know, we talked about IP, but what, what is actually built here and what you're able to do with it is a lot broader reaching. And I think, Eli is obviously wise enough to know and built this thing out to really try to touch on those things later. Um, you know, but as a core initiative, he's focusing in on this area. And I, I've let you talk to that, but I, I believe that that's ultimately like there's a lot more use cases with what you yeah. build and laid the foundation for. You just felt from your experience that this was an easy road for you to go down and to grow. And it was a very high, uh, not maybe not an easy route, but a, uh, a high value prop from, from what you came out with. Yeah, it's, it's really, you, know, you talked a bit of, uh, about kind of the, some of the projects that, that have had a hard time marketing and, and breaking through to, you know, traditional markets in terms of usability and, and uh, profitability, right? So, you know, luckily our use case in, in the IP space, and again, kind of a little more serendipity is that it, anything um, that, that will be successful using blockchain has to have a problem that blockchain solves, right? You can't be a technology in search of a problem and then go around and try to just apply it to everything and it's going to be this magic band-aid right you have to you know you have to be surgical about it and you know luckily um ip and happen to be kind of my expertise is in my opinion one of the top few areas where blockchain can be used in a way that you know absolutely vaulted over any other type of uh, solution that, that can better the the space as a whole right it's one of these um few examples of places that can really, really, really benefit from blockchain. And so it just happened to be, be that, but like, like you said, uh, Adam, we have, a um, you know, the hashing aspect and inserting these hashes into, to blockchains is that's just one part of our component, uh, one component of our, our product, um, workflow, but, um, taking that little component out, we've modularized it essentially. Uh, you, you can rip that little function out. And like you said, there's so many, um, 
so many different use cases for for how proving time can really change something. I was I don't know if I mentioned this to you the other day or not, but like we had a couch delivered to our house a few days ago, right? And um, I was hoping you'd touch on this. Yeah, so this is just it just came to mind. But you know, you uh, the guy the guys brought it in. Um, you know, they they set it down and and then, you know the kids wanted to jump on it and stuff. And they're like, hold on a second, I got to take a picture of it to like prove to my boss that like we actually physically delivered it at, at this time and, and all that stuff. And you know, me being the <laughs> me being the blockchain guy, I was I was like, uh, yeah, you could fake that picture pretty easily you know your bosses would would like a little security knowing that that this picture isn't like like you said deep faked or or photoshopped or, or whatever to, to save their job right um and one way easily to do that would just be to take the fi- the the photo instantly that that he had just taken and on the spot you know hash it put it in and it just becomes this layer of security on top of that right um where they're already using this you know it was a it was an an app in, the, in his phone he just took a, the picture of the the um the couch and that was kind of it uh you know just one more step and he doesn't even have to know what's going on right it's just a, a back-end kind of api call and there you've got like an extra layer of really really powerful security around the product itself right so and that's just one of thousands of ways uh, where time is sensitive you know look at logistics man i mean you talk about i didn't get my amazon order or you, you know uh, imagine that the scale of that uh use so um, you know, wills. I'm th- going into legal space here. You know, when did when was the will changed? It's like, did Aunt Becky come in and, and have a uh, granny change it to her? Right? I mean, when when did this happen? Uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, contract signing, insurance uh, on a car that you drive off a lot. When were you covered? If you get sideswiped on the way to the lot, right? This kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Some of the cooler applications like uh, Tesla um, log data. Like you can tell how uh, was this uh, was this uh, was the guy drunk or did you know he swerve because uh, um, a dog ran on the road right yeah uh, the data can tell you kind of what happened there and you can prove that he didn't make it up or, or hack the log right these are there's just so many applications and really what it comes down to is being able to prove the time and, and we have the, the api and, and the capability that's it's it's functioning um like butter right now um it's it has been for a long time so you know we're we're open if anybody's out there that wants to chat about that. Um, you know, we're open to, to talking to you about uh, implementing. I, 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 I think, uh, yeah, I think there's, you know, off the top of my head, I know there's probably even other blockchains that might be interested in implementing this technology into them, right? Um, yep. There's probably, you know, there's probably a bunch of people from Ethereum, you know, talking, you know, hey, how do we do this and all this other stuff. Uh, You're right. I, I agree. I, there's probably people at Ethereum who want to use more block uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. But, so there's a. But yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I mean, from from our perspective, and our, uh, you know, yeah. you know, Nick runs Zap. Zap's an Oracle platform. I think it'd be really interesting to, uh, you know, hook you up with him and, and see if there's not yeah. a opportunity there, uh, you know, where you could talk to him about, you know, Oracleization and all that yeah. stuff too, which which I think is a huge market. So definitely stuff to be looking out for. Everybody who's you know tuning in. Um, you know, I think, uh, Eli in the future, you know, next hackathon, something like that, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll dive into those APIs and integrate sure. and maybe have a challenge or something. And that's something we talked about now. I think it was a little bit too short order to get that yeah. done this time. To be um, continued. but, um, yeah, yeah, I, you know, two minutes here, where, where are we following you, you know, track in progress, you know, I, yeah. I mentioned that before I understand everybody knows where to go for that form, but, um, Give a shout out to yeah, your so socials and everything maybe, else. Maybe look at you know 2021 for us is you know it's continue to grow and, and get the uh, the enterprise you know, version out and and working like a top. Um, that's the first first couple quarters and and then uh, get get everybody on it right. So that's that's the last half of the year. That's what we're looking forward to right now. And you know we're uh, we're really doing some um, some fun things with this. And and I know that um, you talk about giving the APIs a run. You know, I'm in, I'm really excited to be able to do that uh, in the future. And you know, got some got some cool ideas in my head. I'd like to get out with some other people and work on. You know, even if it's only for a couple of days, and, and see what people do with it. Right. Um, it, it seems like a really cool concept. So I'm I'm looking forward to, to continuing uh, being a part of this and you know working with people to, to do some cool stuff. So um, and uh, come follow me at uh, follow us at Idea Block on on Twitter, um, you know, Facebook. We're on there um, somewhere in a. I'm more, we're more of a Twitter company, I'd say, and, and maybe like a company, uh, but um, yeah, that, those are places to go. And then, I mean, 
uh, you can get uh, all our, if you want to email me, uh, the company or, or me, it's all, all on our site as well. So happy to hear from you. We'll love to chat, reach out and um, look forward to chatting with everybody. So. And I'm going to put you on the spot here. Eli has committed, you know, he said he has a big space here in Raleigh. So we're going to, I'm going to make, make him stick to that and we're going to use it for something soon. So for those in Raleigh, um, sure. definitely, uh, you know, we're going to be working with Eli and uh, we're going to do some things together. So it should be interesting bringing that to this community. Uh, you know, as COVID wraps down here, I think it's really important that we all get out and meet people, not in this virtual environment, but in person. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to do some awesome stuff down here. I'm really excited, you know, working with you and, and, you know, for the next hackathon, we're going to do some awesome stuff. I'm sure of it. So it's been a, it's been a real pleasure. I appreciate you coming on a short notice. Like I, I, it's really exciting the, everything you're working on. And um, I know that, you know, I spoke with Eric, you know, and everybody else who's coming on next, but uh, these, these things are really important to us, you know, as developers, as innovators, as everybody else, I think what you're doing is really significant. And, you know, it, it has a real tangible use case today, not tomorrow, right now, like yep. we can do this. So. Well, I appreciate it, and I appreciate the opportunity, and looking forward to uh, continuing on and, and doing some cool stuff. So have a great rest of the day. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Eli. All right, man.